Nearly since the beginning of Barack Obama's campaign for the office of the presidency of the United States of America, there has been a question about his legal standing as a natural born citizen. It has been a constitutional requirement since the signing of the Constitution that the president's office be filled by a natural born citizen only. In other words, both parents must be a U.S. citizen at the time of birth, and the birth must take place on United States soil. Short of these requirements, a person would be ineligible to hold the highest office of the land. He would be constitutionally ineligible. If a person were to attain the office of president, knowing that he was ineligible and by purposely defrauding the American electorate, by falsifying or cloaking his identifying records, that person would certainly have committed a serious criminal act, an impeachable act, and perhaps a treasonous act. This person would have to be considered a purposed usurper to the office of the presidency and commander-in-chief of the number one superpower of the world. Every law he signs, every treaty he enters into, every order he gives to troops would necessarily be illegal laws, treaties, and orders. Since shortly before Obama took office, he has since spent over one million dollars to seal and conceal every identifying document that would clearly disclose to the American people who he really is and if he really is constitutionally eligible to serve as President of the United States. To date, not a single state of the United States has verified with an original certificate of live birth indicating a doctor's name and a hospital location the actual birthplace or birth state of Barack Obama. This is in spite of the demands of multiplied millions of Americans and a myriad of media sources who have asked for it. On June the 10th, 2010, WorldNet Daily reported that a former Hawaii elections official, Mr. Tim Adams, who, as it has now been verified, was employed in that capacity during the Obama candidacy. This former elections official is insisting that he has first-hand knowledge that Barack Hussein Obama was not born in Hawaii and that no Hawaiian birth certificate exists for him in any Hawaiian governmental agency. In addition to this startling revelation, WorldNet Daily also disclosed the separate investigations of two independent private investigators that revealed that Barack Obama is currently in possession of and actively using a social security number assigned to him originating from the state of Connecticut. To date, not a single connection has been found with Barack Obama ever having lived in Connecticut. To compound the social security number issue, it has also been uncovered that the records indicate the number was issued between 1977 and 1979. Yet Obama's earliest employment reportedly was in 1975 at a Baskin Robbins ice cream shop in Oahu, Hawaii. This opens several questions of legal concern, serious legal concern. How could Obama have been employed legally without providing a social security number to Baskin Robbins? What number was he using then? Since it is clear that the number he is now using was not issued until several years later. And how could a young man living in Hawaii, having no connections whatever to Connecticut, a continent away, how could he be issued a social security number from Connecticut? WorldNet Daily further confirmed that the social security number in question links to Obama in the online records maintained by the Selective Service System, inserting the social security number that Obama is currently using, his birth date, and his last name, produces a valid Selective Service number. What has been the White House's reaction to these recent startling, perhaps condemning revelations? Press Secretary Robert Gibbs has now become quite famous for simply laughing in the face of any reporter who dares to ask the questions. In addition, he simply marginalizes the reporter or sidesteps the question altogether. Attaining the office of presidency while knowingly falsifying one's identification and eligibility is a federal and criminal offense punishable by imprisonment. Knowingly attaining a social security number in a fraudulent fashion and then using that social security number for identification purposes is also a federal and criminal offense punishable by imprisonment. Could it be that the man sitting in the White House has knowingly committed these federal criminal offenses? Why does not the White House simply produce a valid certified long-form birth certificate and a lawful explanation 
why our president is currently using a social security number that has no valid or legal connection to his life. Could it be that Obama's cloak of secrecy is finally coming unraveled?